hey, not a single one of my subscriber has donated to my Indiegogo campaign. So thank you all for donating nothing. What's up? It's the Culture Detective here, investigating your favorite movies. And today I'm going to be doing a movie review, a film review, dare I say, on a film I saw last night. And when I say film, I mean seriously, seriously film. I watched this film on 35 millimeter projection. And that film is The Red Shoes by Emmerich Pressburger and Michael Powell. This is a film from 1948. So yeah, I still, even though I've been reviewing films for like, I don't know, seven, eight years already, I still don't review enough old movies. And by old movies, I don't mean like 1970s or 80s. They're not really that old to me anymore. By that, I mean silent films and films from the 30s and 40s. And Truth be told, yes, I am not that familiar, not as familiar with films of that era as I am with more recent times, but there are still a lot of great films from the 30s and the 40s that I really wanted to talk about. One of which is Late Spring, which I reviewed earlier last month, but I desperately need to rewatch that to give that a better verdict. But the Red Shoes right here is a film that you can watch once and you're going to be blown away by it. This is a film by the British power duo filmmaker Pressburger and Powell, Double P. And I've only seen one other film from them and that is A Matter of Life and Death, which completely blew me away because this film is really short and simple but it packed so many themes into one film on top of that the cinematography the editing the comedy everything feels so ahead of its time everything's really smart cleverly written and it is a film that genuinely made me feel happy and sad and put me on a roller coaster ride of emotions but the red shoes i think is an even better example of everything that I just mentioned. Essentially, The Red Shoes is uh, based off of a H Hans Christian Andersen, Danish folk writer, Hans Christian Andersen's story, The Red Shoes. So The Red Shoes is about The Red Shoes. The Red Shoes is about a girl who loves dancing. She dances ballet. She finds a pair of red shoes, she wears them, and she keeps dancing and dancing and dancing, but she dances so much that she can't stop dancing. So eventually he, she dies. That is The Red Shoes, the story by Hans Christian Andersen. In the film, however, The Red Shoes is about a girl who real loves dancing. Her name is Victoria Page. And she joined a ballet company headed by Mr. Lermontov. Boris Lermontov and she began climbing the ranks, climbing the ladder in the ballet world and becoming better and better and more and more famous at dancing and the whole film is about her dreams, her passion, her ambitions clashing with her life and her love. And there is a moment in the film where Lermontov, the, the chief head man of the company, the principal, president, president of the company, the CEO of the ballet company, who after describing the story, The Red Shoes, he says, time rushes by, love rushes by, life rushes by. And these three sentences will go on to basically foreshadow the rest of the entire film, where we see time, love, and life rush by and in favor of Victoria Page's dreams and ambition. And so this is a fantastic film about dreams and art and passion. And as a film, uh, aspiring filmmaker myself, I have a lot of sympathy and, and, and I really relate to a lot of the themes in the film because my ultimate dream and goal is to be a filmmaker. I want to be very good at what I'm trying to do. And though life 
time, love, everything else will eventually clash with these dreams. Now, then what do I do? Now, let's put, let's address the elephant of the room first. The Technicolor is gorgeous. The cinematography is beautiful. And the thing is, A Matter of Life and Death is way more supernatural and fantastical, but somehow the Red Shoes is on par, if not even more colorful and gorgeously composed than A Matter of Life and Death. Also, the aspect ratio is 4 by 3. And when I saw that film at the Academy Museum, and the screen sort of goes like this, I was like, oh my god. 4 by 3 looks so good. When it's tall, it looks gorgeous. Um, The first act of the film pretty much describes how it feels for me to enter the film industry. The same way Victoria Page is trying to enter the ballet industry, where Victoria Page and, as an, and another young composer, Julian Craster, they both try to enter the company and they try to impress the director or I guess the the main man the big man himself Lermontov but at first they're looked down they're insignificant and they're swept up in so much busy commotion and so much system that they think oh my god like I I want to be a great dancer slash composer but I will never be a great dancer slash composer because There's so many people fighting for the same few things. Another thing I love about the depiction of the industry in the first act is that just like the film industry, when you enter it, there are so many people with different accents. There's someone with Italian accent, there's someone who speaks French, there's someone who speaks Russian, a lot of people from different parts of Europe. And for me, the LA film industry is basically like that. Everyone's from a different part of the world and you're all trying to get along, you're all trying to be better than the one you're in the same rank with. And there are so many moments that's genuinely funny. I also really like Lermontov's character, this big mustache twirling sort of this stiff guy. He's kind of a mysterious genius, yet throughout the whole film you can tell he is deeply flawed. And he never, like this character is never taken to a cartoonish level. He feels like a real person that I somehow know somewhere in the industry. Now we have Act 2 where, of course, Victoria Page and Julian Craster, dancer, composer, become more and more successful and they're getting closer and closer to their dream. And we have a 17 minute long ballet sequence in the middle of the film. That is so exhilarating and beautiful and shocking. I was genuinely on the edge of my seat. I stared at the screen and I'm just like, holy shit, this is what cinema's made for. It's colorful, beautiful, it's emotional, and it's all these themes, hope, dreams, love, passion, life, death, clashing before our eyes, exploding with colors, amazing editing as well. At some point, we are completely inside the play. In the story, this is supposed to be a ballet dance slash play, but at some point we are completely inside the play. We have camera movements and editing techniques that are obviously not real in the world. We're inside the play now. And this is a rare moment where the play finishes inside the film and us, the viewers, we started clapping. And then of course, after the film ends, we also clapped. So it's basically a film within a film. It's genuinely some of the best cinema I've ever seen. Now, we have the last act, which is great. It's tragic. Um, Sad things happened, but it pales a bit in comparison with the ballet sequence because that was just so great. But the last act is still great. It just didn't hit as hard as the second act. Um, But still, this is a masterpiece. Front to back, editing, acting... Nothing here feels dated, and I feel like it's a common misconception for people to think, oh, people in the 1930s and 40s probably act differently. They are not good actors, and the camera work is not as interesting. That's not true, Uh, especially for the case of Pressburger and Powell, who are some of the most important trailblazers in cinema in the 1940s. So, yeah, also, I just recently found out that Thelma Schoonmacher, one of the most important editors of all times, was married to Michael Powell. 
I feel ashamed to admit that I just found that out. So I'm giving the red shoes a strong 9 to a 10 out of 10. So have you watched the red shoes? Comments below, let me know, subscribe if you want more, and thanks for watching.